Welcome back to the Simulator Series. In today's episode, we are going to be scripting in some pet eggs which cost Robux the hatch. So, hopping directly into Roblox Studio, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and create the developer product for our egg, which is going to cost Robux. So, we'll go into the game settings. Then, in the monetization tab, we can see developer products. Let's go ahead and click on create. And now we have one created. We want to go ahead and edit this. Now, I'll set the name of this to Earth Egg, as that's our egg, which is going to cost Robux. And for the price, I'm just going to leave this at one Robux. But of course, you can feel free to change that to whatever you like to. Then I'll hit the save button. And now we want to reopen the game settings tab, go back to monetization, find the developer product that we just created, which may be at the very bottom for you. At least it is for me. Then we'll click these three dots right here and click copy ID to clipboard. So now we have the actual ID of the developer product. Next, what we're going to do is go ahead and update the shop config. So we'll go inside of the replicated storage inside of the configs folder and go ahead and open up the shop module script. Inside of here, we have the products variable, which we know contains a couple of different tables. So we have clicks, we have pets, we have spins and even game passes. After the game passes though, we're gonna go ahead and add another category to this, which is going to be called eggs. And for the value of eggs, that will be another table. Now, just like most of our other things, this table is actually going to be an array of other tables. So let's go ahead and create a table inside of here. And now this table is going to have two properties. The first property is going to be ID, and we want to include the ID of the developer product that we just created. So we'll go ahead and paste that inside of there. And then we want to have a name property, which we'll use to specify what egg this is actually for. So we'll set the value of this to a string, and we're going to go ahead and say Earth. And now that's actually all that we're going to do inside of the shop config module script, so we can go ahead and close out of that. The next thing that we want to do is update another config, and this is actually the eggs config. So let's go ahead and open up that module script. And the first thing that we want to do inside of here is actually create a variable for the marketplace service. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we've done that, we're going to go inside of the config table and locate our earth egg, which we can see right here. And we can also see that we have a price property here as well, which we're not actually going to set right here. So let's just set that to zero. What we're actually going to do is create a function which will run when the script is first required. That'll update this table and update all of the eggs which have the currency of Robux and actually update the price property of all of them to reflect the actual price in Robux. Of course, alternatively, we could skip over this entire thing and then just manually set the price property by hand for every single Robux egg that we create. But in my opinion, that's a really bad way to do it because I could easily see myself changing the price of a Robux egg and then completely forgetting to update this module to reflect the actual price change. So let's go ahead and actually create that function. We're going to go all the way down towards the bottom of our script, and we'll go ahead and create this function right above the generate eggs model function that we also use when the script is first ran, at least on the client side. So we're going to go ahead and create a function, which is going to be called setup robux eggs, and it's not going to have any parameters. Now we want to go ahead and loop through the eggs config. So we're going to say fork egg comma info in eggs dot config do. Then we want to check if the egg costs Robux. So we'll create a variable called does cost Robux. And to determine if the egg costs Robux inside of the info table, we have the currency property and we want to check if that is Robux. And now if it does not cost Robux, then we can simply continue through the loop. But now anything we write after that if statement, we know is actually an egg, which does cost Robux. So now that we know that this egg does actually cost Robux, the next thing that we want to do is get the price of it using the marketplace service. The thing is though, is that we actually need to get the product ID of this developer product in order for us to be able to actually check its price. And how do we get its product ID? Well, we can get that from the shop config that we just updated. So we're going to create a variable called product ID, and we're not going to set that equal to anything. Then what we want to do is loop through all of the products which are in the eggs table that we just added to the products config. So we'll say for underscore info in shop config dot products dot eggs do. And now we want to check if the egg product that we're iterating through is actually the egg from the config that we're currently iterating through as well. So we'll say if info dot name equals egg then. So if we did find the correct egg, then what we're going to do is set the product ID variable equal to the info dot ID. And then we can use a break statement here to stop the for loop from continuing to iterate because we now found the information that we wanted. So now that we have the product ID, let's go ahead and fetch its price. We'll go ahead and create a variable called price and we'll use the marketplace service to get the price. We want to use a method called get product info and now we need to pass through the product ID. We also need to pass through the info type enum. So we'll say enum dot info type and we want to get information back on a product. And then we can index this information with price in Robux to actually get, well, the price in Robux. 
So now that we've gotten the price, let's go ahead and update the eggs config. So we'll say eggs.config, index that with the specific egg, and then we'll set the price property to the brand new price that we just got. In addition to that, to make this a little bit easier for ourselves in the future, we're going to go ahead and add another property to this table, which will actually be called product ID. And we want to set that to the product ID that we just received. This will save us from having to do this work in the future if we need to access the product ID in another script in the future. So now that we've created this function, let's go ahead and actually call it. And we'll go ahead and call it as one of the last things in the script. So we'll go ahead and say set up Robux X. And with that being said, we're now done with updating the eggs module so we can go ahead and exit out of that. Now, because of how our hatching currently works in our game, in order to trigger the hatch animation, we actually use a remote function to do this. And because of how our system's going to work with this, we're not able to use that same remote function when a player purchases a Robux egg because things work a little bit differently and you'll realize that by the end of this video. So we actually need to create a remote event that we're gonna fire off from the server side to basically tell the client, hey, run the animation because we are hatching an egg, it's just a little bit different than normal. So to do this, we're gonna go inside of the remotes folder, inside of the eggs folder, and we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new remote event, which we'll rename to be called force hatch. Now that we've created the remote event, the next thing that we want to do is actually update the egg server script inside of the server script service. Now, actually, the first thing that we're going to do is create a brand new module script, and we're going to rename this module script to be called eggs instead. Then we'll open up our egg server script and we'll copy everything inside of here and paste it directly inside of our brand new module script. We'll then go ahead and delete our egg server script because we no longer need it as we're going to be using it as a module script rather than a server script because we're actually going to need to share one of the functions from the script to another script. So now that we have all the contents of our egg server script inside of the eggs module script and we've deleted the server script, let's go towards the top of this script and create our module variable. So we're going to create a variable inside of here and we'll just call it shared and set that to a blank table. Then let's go all the way down to the very bottom of our script and we want to go ahead and return the share table like we would any normal module script. Now that we've done that, we actually want to go ahead and update the hatch function. The first thing that we want to do with this function is we want to actually add another parameter to this, which will be called force. And that'll actually be a boolean, which is also going to be optional. So we'll include the question mark after boolean. Now, why are we adding the force parameter here? Well, if a player is purchasing a Robux egg, I don't want to worry about the player's pet storage, because if they have spent Robux to purchase an egg, we should just give them the pet that they deserve rather than canceling that out because they may not have enough inventory space. So that's what we're going to use this force parameter for to force that into the player's inventory, even if they don't have enough space to actually hold it. So let's go ahead and update this function to account for the force parameter. Inside of here, where we begin to create the stored pets variable, the max stored pets, and the hash storage variable, this is where we actually handle checking the player's storage to determine if we should allow them to hash the pet or not. And we only want to do that if force is not true. So we're going to say if not force, and then we'll go ahead and just copy all four lines directly into this if statement, just like that. Now we need to do this one more time, and that's actually inside of our while loop. And we can see right here exactly where we're going to do that. So once again, we'll say if not force, then. And then we'll go ahead and paste all four of those lines directly inside of here. And now that will allow for our force parameter to actually function correctly. The next thing that we want to do, though, is go down towards the bottom of our script where we actually hook up our remote function to the hatch function. Instead of hooking this up directly to the hatch function, we want to actually create an anonymous function here. The parameters of this anonymous function are going to be the player, the egg, and the amount of hatches that they want to perform. Then what we're going to do is use a return statement, and we're going to return the hatch function, but we're going to pass through the player, the egg, and the amount, and then for force, we're going to pass through false. The reason that we need to create an anonymous function rather than directly hooking it up to the function is because by not doing this, it would actually leave it open for exploits, which would be extremely uncommon, I believe, to actually even find. But if some hacker was lucky enough to actually discover this, what they could do is trigger the hatch remote function, passing through the egg and the amount, and then they could also just pass through true as a boolean, which our hatch function would just believe and act as it should. So now, by handling it this way, it completely rules out the possibility of a player exploiting this. Now, there is actually one more thing that we need to do with the hatch function, and that is to actually convert it from a local function to a shared function so that other scripts can use this. So what we'll do is remove the keyword local, and then we'll add this to the shared table. Now that we've added it to the shared table, we also have to update when we use this function inside of here. So we'll go ahead and update it just like that. And with that all being said, we're done with the eggs module script. So we can go ahead and close out of that. Now, the next thing that we have to do is actually update the shop server script. So we'll go inside of the server script service and open up the shop script. Inside of here, the first thing that we want to do is actually require our eggs module script that we just changed from a server script over to a module script. So we'll go ahead and create a variable called eggs manager. 
And to access that, we'll go inside of the server script service and require the eggs module script. Now that we've created a variable for the eggs manager, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and create a function for actually rewarding the egg. So we'll do that right below our reward pet function. We'll create a function called reward egg. And the parameters of this are going to be the exact same as the reward pet. So it'll be a player and the product ID, which would be a number. Now, we can honestly treat this very similar to the reward pet function. So we can go ahead and actually copy the first two lines from that. So we do want to create the index variable and get the product index from the ID, but we do want to modify how we actually get the product info. Instead of going inside of the pets table, we of course want to go inside of the eggs table. Now that we have the egg product info, let's go ahead and create a variable for the specific egg. And how do we get the specific egg? Well, that's inside of the product info, and that is the name property. Now that we've gotten the egg, we can actually go ahead and hatch it for the player. And now you might not remember this, but the hash function actually returns to us an array of pets. So we're going to create a variable for those pets, and we'll call that variable pets. Technically with this though, players can only purchase a single egg at a time. So the variable might be better named pet instead, but I'll leave it as is. And then what we're gonna do is use the egg manager, more specifically the hatch function that we just created. We'll pass through the player, we'll pass through the egg. For the amount, we'll say one, and for force, we'll go ahead and say true. Then what we're gonna do is use that remote event that we just created called force hatch to actually tell the client, hey, perform the hatching animation for the player. So we'll go ahead and say remotes.eggs.forcehatch colon fire client. We'll pass through the player, we'll pass through the egg, and then we also need to pass through the pet as well. So we'll go ahead and say pets and index that with one because there is only one pet inside of here anyway. So we'll just pass through that pet. And finally, similar to how we do it up here, we need to return a product purchase decision. So we'll go ahead and say return if pets, then then we'll go ahead and return purchase granted. Otherwise, we would return not processed yet. And that's all that we have to do to actually create the reward egg function. Now, let's go to our purchase product function. Inside of here, we can see that we have a couple of different if statements to check what the product type actually is and then perform an action based off that. Let's go ahead and copy and paste the lines from the pets category. This time, we'll replace pets with eggs. And then instead of calling the reward pet function, let's go ahead and actually call the reward egg function. And now that we've done that, that's all that we have to do inside of the script and on the server side in total. So we can go ahead and close out of that and collapse our server script service. Now it's time to implement this on the client side, and that's extremely easy. So to do this, we want to go inside of the starter player, inside of the starter player scripts, inside of the GUI folder, and we want to go ahead and open up the eggs local script. The first thing we want to do inside of here is update the hatch function, because if it calls Robux, then we want to go ahead and prompt the player to purchase the developer product. So we'll go to the hatch function, and inside of here, we can see where we check if the currency equals Robux, and we even have a comment here which says add dev product. So what we want to do is actually get the product ID. And how do we do that? Well, we can use the egg config variable that we already have created inside of here, which for these specific eggs will actually have a property called product ID. And now that we've gotten the product ID, we can go ahead and use the marketplace service to purchase it. So we'll go ahead and say marketplace service colon prompt purchase. We'll go ahead and pass through the player as well as the product ID. And now the last thing that we need to do is actually hook up the force hatch remote event to the hatch animation function. So let's go all the way towards the very bottom of our script. And now let's use our remotes variable to go ahead and access the force hatch remote event. Then we'll say dot on client event and connect that to the hatch animation function just like that. Oh man, of course I made a mistake here. You cannot use prompt purchase. You have to use prompt product purchase. That is the actual method name. And now we can go into our game and test this out. So once we enter the game, we can actually see the price of the egg is updated in our GUI display. It says it only costs one Robux. Let's go ahead and try to hatch it. We can see, would you like to buy earth egg? Let's go ahead and buy it. And it says that you have purchased the egg and we did actually receive a pig pet. So I'll go ahead and try to purchase this one more time. We can see that I did receive another pig pet just like that. So yeah, we can clearly see that this is all working correctly. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with all that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. If you did enjoy, as always, smash the like button. Feel free to go down below in the description and visit monster.dev or my Patreon to support me and gain access to all the scripts that we made in this video and a ton of other assets that you can use to easily create your next Roblox game. Anyways, I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.